you there, Jen? Replay. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our regular public council meeting for Monday, June 12th, 2023. Here at the town of Torbay, a public I'll call our meeting to order. First order of business to adopt the agenda. Any additions? Can I get a motion to adopt the agenda first, please? So moved. Moved. Second. No. Okay. And seconded. All Are right, new business new relevant. Business? Pardon? Are we not doing new business or no people? I'm doing it right now. We got a motion first. Oh, okay. I was sure. thinking about that today. Yeah. It, you know, Sorry, so. Mayor. It's all right. It's been a while. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, yep. Can I ask that under the planning development that uh, item number three be removed? Uh, we had discussions with the component today and. Uh, there's a different application that should be put forward there for that. So we can remove item number three from the agenda. Okay. Oh. All right. And, and as well, under 7.3.1 and in HR, if we can remove the uh, ratification vote at this time until we discuss it a little bit further. I appreciate it. Okay, new business, Ralph. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Excuse me, should we have to adopt the agenda again, or? Yeah. We haven't adopted it yet. Okay. Councilor Manning? No, thank you. Thanks. Councilor Pollard? Yes. Okay. Councilor Ashby? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Councilor Ellis? Pass. <coughs> Deputy Mayor? Thank you. Okay, and I got it. Thanks. All right, sis. All in favor to adopt the agenda as amended, please. All right. Aye. All right. Opposed? Aye. Right. Carried. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. We had a set of public council meeting minutes for 29th of May. Could I get a motion to adopt those, please? So moved. Second. Who did second? Any errors or omissions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Carried. Conflict of interest. There's one item there that. Uh, I will raise myself and Councillor Manning are in conflict on this Bell Mobility cell tower. Absolutely. And we'll deal with that when the time comes up. And there's a couple of other things there. I don't know that anybody's has a conflict there or not. Uh, proclamations, presentations, Q and A. Oh, I meant to add an extra presentation to the agenda. For all these people that are here to present the winners for kindergarten to grade four for the what is a mayor contest. All right. Proclamation National Indigenous Peoples Day. Councillor Manning. Proclama Proclamation Na Natural <coughs> Indigenous Peoples Day, June 21st, 2023. Whereas the Constitution of Canada recognizes the existing rights of the indi indigenous peoples of Canada. And whereas in the Constitution of Canada, 
Indigenous Peoples of Canada includes the First Nations, Inuit and Metis, Metis sorry, mm -hmm. people of Canada. And whereas Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has declared June the 21st as National in Indig Indigenous Day, People's Day, in honor, recognition, and celebration of the valuable contributions made by the Indigenous Peoples of Canada to Canadian society. And whereas many Indigenous Peoples celebrate the summer solace, which has important symbolism to their cultures. And whereas First Light St. John's Friendship Centre, the largest Indigenous non-for-profit organization in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador since 1983, in keeping with their mission to serve the indigenous and broader community through celebration and support of indigenous cultures and the provision of appropriate programs and services delivered in an atmosphere of trust, respect, and friendship has established itself as a leading organization in the areas of culture, health, employment, housing, corrections, recreation, family service, and social enterprise. And whereas First Light will be celebrating Natural, Natural Indigenous Peoples Day with numerous community events. Now therefore I, Mayor Craig Scott, do hereby proclaim June 21st, 23 as National Indigenous Peoples Day in the town of Torbay and urge my fellow citizens to recognize the contributions Indigenous peoples have made to Torbay, Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada. Signed this 12th day of June 2023. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Second. Comments? Go ahead. Thanks, Mayor. Um, you know, I remember growing up being told all the stories um, of what the history books had and school books had for us, and they're quite different than the stories that my children are learning now. And I think that um, this is an area that um, there needs to be a big spotlight shone on the injustices of the past. In fact, I sat today in an hour-long um, training with my work with the federal government about reconciliation, the importance of it across the country. Um, you know, I think that um, when I was growing up, there was that stigma. If you had native blood, there was an issue. Today, we celebrate it. And the fact that our town and our community is having a proclamation to share publicly that we want to be an inclusive community. We want to make sure that all people have equal rights here uh, is absolutely amazing. And uh, I just want to say, um, you know, there's a lot of important work that gets done in this space. And with our work at MNL, we had uh, Chief Mizzle Joe. He came in and had a talk with us about what his experience was fighting for his uh, community and the monies that were owed to them and what they were able to do with it over the last number of years. I don't encourage anybody who's interested to Google that because it's, a, it's available online to watch. So I just want to say I'm very proud. Thank you, Councillor Manning, for reaching, reading out the proclamation. And thank you to the Town of Torbay for this kind of support for all people in our community because inclusive communities are very important. And the last thing I'll say is some of my friends here are Indigenous. We do have Indigenous people in our community here, and I know they appreciate it when we do this. Thank you. Okay. That's it. Any other comments? <clears throat> yeah, I'd just like to add, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I was reading, uh, and I can't find the, uh, the actual uh, article, but Grand Falls, the town of Grand Falls has done something for, uh, I think, a crosswalk or something with uh, indigenous uh, roots on that. So I th I'd like to commend them on doing that, and any other town like ourselves could take something on like that. I think it'd be uh, a great step forward uh, and a lot of uh, recognition that uh, this should be uh, at the height of awareness. Any other comments? Well, I will add that uh, myself and Councillor Tapper and his wife, and my wife and uh, Councillor Tina Neary from Portugal St. Phillips did attend the Mi'kmaq Cultural Foundation fundraiser a couple of weeks ago. And it was a great opportunity for us to learn about their culture and, and be entertained by Indigenous artists. And, and it, was, uh, it was a great time, and I would recommend to anybody, if you get an opportunity to go something like that, go to it, because it's great. Uh, it's a lot of fun, for one thing. And number two, it's a great learning opportunity. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Carry. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Proclamation Town of Torbay, Newfoundland Tulip Festival, Deputy Mayor. Uh, Town of Torbay, Newfoundland Tulip Festival, week of June 11th to the 17th, Proclamation, whereas 
The um, Canada Garden Council recognizes provincial garden roots and large scale provincial festivals that celebrate and showcase garden tourism efforts, whereas the Newfoundland Tulip Festival is a collaborative approach to creating a province-wide garden tourism initiative to help foster the development of Canada's garden culture on the East Coast, whereas the town of Torbay is committed to working together with other towns and partners to enable full recognition of the values and benefits garden experiences deliver for Canadians and the communities in which they live, whereas the town of Torbay will celebrate the Newfoundland Tulip Festival from June 11 to the 17, 2023, and proclaim to residents, businesses, and visitors alike our commitment to garden tourism through our 8,600 plus tulip blooms and a variety of garden tourism activities whereas the town of Torbay will continue to collaborate, share resources, and encourage participation with other communities across our province to grow the Newfoundland Tulip Festival year after year. Now, therefore, be it resolved that on behalf of Torbay Town Council and on behalf of the citizens of Torbay, I, Mayor Craig Scott, do hereby proclaim June 11 to the 17, 2023 as Newfoundland Tulip Festival Week in the town of Torbay, so moved. Second. Comments? I'd like to make a comment if I could. Yeah, I attended the uh, opening uh, event yesterday at the History House, and a uh, good crowd turned out. Uh, we had the mayors. You introduced the mayors of Carbonair and, and Bay Roberts. It's great to see them because they had to kick off in their communities last year. But, uh, you know, I, I think um, some people may have wondered why we got involved with this, but it's all about unification in our town. We call ourselves Beautiful Tor Bay. The more beauty we have and uh, something new like this will add to it. So um, I congratulate anybody, uh, especially Deanne, our Economic Development Officer, for, um, for taking care of this. did a great job yesterday getting people out and, and a nice uh, spread of, of goodies there and everything else. So it was great to see. Yep. Agreed. Do you have a comment? Yeah, if I could. Um, I got a call this morning from uh, Mayor Dale Colburn from St. Leonard Cricket. And her question was, um, how are you guys doing all this stuff you're doing with your tulips? And do you have tulips from Ottawa in your tulip beds? In which we do, because there's some of those that were brought down from the, you know, the, the National Tulip Gardens. Um, this is a big thing. And you know, we often talk about Torbay being ahead of the curve. Well, Bay Roberts really have started this. We came on stream. And now I've got a mayor from the tip of the Great Northern Peninsula reaching out saying, Hey, how'd you guys do that? What did it look like? And can we maybe be a part of that, bring that to our council? That was amazing. So I connected her with Deanne today, and Deanne got back to me and said, I'll be speaking with uh, Mayor Colburn um, later on, set up a time and get things sorted. So, you know, in this space, I think Councillor Tappy, right? Some people don't really always understand some of the things that we're doing, but there are national people who travel to do the, the tours around the tulips. And if we're part of that destination, that's more people coming into our community, one, to experience beautiful Torbay, two, to spend their money in our shops, and three, to share with their friends when they go home how gorgeous our town really is. So in all different aspects of this, it's a great return on investment for what we're doing, and what a great thing to add to the community. Thanks. Yep, you have a comment? Well, it's kind of funny how this whole thing got started. I got a text message a couple of years ago from uh, the economic development officer in Bay Roberts, because I know I, I've had that relationship with them going on Bay Roberts radio and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And he asked me, were we interested in getting into garden tourism and the tulips? And I remember when I, I lived in Ottawa for 10 years, and that is the tulip capital of the world, as far as I'm concerned. Well, this is for Canada, for sure. And uh, I put him on, the, on to Deanne, and she ran with it. And we got tulips from Bay Roberts, and then we I reached out to a counselor in Ottawa that I knew and I got tulips from there and it was uh, it's pretty cool that they would send us down those mm -hmm. and I think that uh, if anybody gets an opportunity to look at the the program that we have for the tulip festival it lists out all the locations where the tulips are in the town and it also has a key on there to say what <coughs> type of tulips they are because there's certain ones for different things the ones that the war memorial represent certain things so it's uh, there's a lot to it. It's it's 
a lot more than just throwing a bunch of flowers around, even though just throwing a bunch of flowers around looks good too, but there is, there's a lot of meaning behind it and, I, and I'm really glad that we're involved in it. <coughs> uh, we were the first town, I always like to tell Mary Edmund, that declared 2022 the year of the garden and Dave Roberts was second. <laughs> but uh, they were the first to get into the tulips and they draw us in, so that's all, it's all good. It's all uh, partnerships and I talked about this yesterday. You don't just have to have partnerships with the towns that are at your immediate borders and that are very close. From the span, from the 45 minutes I was corrected yesterday after, from here to Bay Roberts, but now you got uh, Mayor Colburn from St. Anthony mm -hmm. that's interested in his garden. St. Lanier Cricket. St. Lanier Cricket. It's up St. Anthony way. <laughs> and uh, they're interested in it too. So that's all part of what we're trying to do here is build this garden tourism route throughout the province for when people are driving around and they, and they can go to different towns and look at what they're doing. So <coughs> it's all good. It's really uh, it's, it's a really nice thing that we're doing. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Carried. <coughs> so uh, we got a presentation from Councillor Epi, 2023 Federation of Canadian Municipalities. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. I think it's kind of fitting that this uh, presentation gets to happen this evening with all of our young mayor wannabes in the room. Um, this has been a really great experience. I joined the uh, conference in AGM first time since um, we, we've had COVID in person. And it was the first time that I got to participate as an FCM board member in person, which was absolutely amazing. Um, some of the highlights from that, I had the opportunity to provide the Atlantic Caucus update. Uh, our president and our CEO from Enel weren't available. So uh, in the room with all of our partners all across Atlantic Canada, I provided the provincial update there. Um, I was able to sit in the room, I'm gonna, if I could Mayor, because I think it's fair to share with some of the young people here, if you don't mind. Um, I got to sit in the room with all of our national leaders, the, every single political party, and listen to them speak, just like you guys are here with us now, and talk about their vision for Canada and what it should look like, and it was powerful. But what was even more powerful than that, and the coolest thing I think I've ever done yet, was meet with the Prime Minister of Canada. So one of the things that this town has done, it's supported me to be able to sit at the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Board of Directors. And as a board member there, I got invited, and only a few of us did, to meet with the Prime Minister and talk about the things that are important to our community. So clean drinking water, safe communities, making sure the fiscal framework for money that gets transferred to this province and to these communities and our communities don't get tangled up the way that it has been in the past with some of the infrastructure funding and other things like that. Wastewater, drugs, all kinds of things that, that we deal with every single day were things, immigration, these were topics that we got to talk to face to face, just as I'm doing with you guys here now, got to do with that with the Prime Minister. And my kids looked at me when I left and they said, Mom, what are you doing? You're going to Toronto without us. And I said, well, I've got a secret to tell you. And this, I love this story. So they were like, well, what's the secret? And I said, well, Mom has a really important meeting, but it's top secret. You can't tell anybody who I'm meeting. And they were like, okay, well, who? So I had the briefing note, and it was quite confidential because we weren't allowed to tell anybody for security reasons that we were meeting with the Prime Minister that he would be there until the day of. So I took the briefing note out, I showed it to my children, and I said, Mom's got a meeting with this guy. And when they saw the picture of the Prime Minister, their jaws hit the ground and went, that's cool. I said, now guys, top secret, you can't tell anybody. So as soon as they got ready and went up to Nana's house, because Nana and Pop were amazing and, and had them with them while I was away doing this, they weren't in the door, and my 11-year-old son went, Nana, you're not going to believe this. Mom's hanging out with Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister. So when, when I got back, it was so cute, and I said to Kathy, said, well, Jake was telling everybody about you meeting with the Prime Minister. I said, who's everybody? Nana. And I said, okay. And I said, Jake, why did you tell Nana? He said, it was too big a secret, Mom. I couldn't keep it. I had to tell. So I think it's really cool to share, especially with all of you young people in the room, because when I was young, someday I thought maybe I'd want to do this, and I'm really glad that you're interested to share and be here tonight. And I want you to know, because I put my name on a ballot, because I had the support of my colleagues, I had the ability to walk in a room face to face, get a selfie with the Prime Minister, and actually spend some time with him having a chat about things that are important to the town of Torbay.
So if I can do it, any and all of you can do it. And I hope someday that I'm the one watching you guys in that space. So that story I wanted to share because I think it's super cool and what a great story to share with our young leaders. Um, the other thing I got to do was host the women's reception and share information about the uh, scholarships for the women who are participating in different events that are around uh, how, they, how they are leaders in their community like our young friends here who someday can grow up and apply for these scholarships as well. We did have a recipient from Newfoundland Labrador and we had them from all across the country. Um, and then after that was done, uh, you know, the general sessions, networking, we had a, a bunch of sessions actually that were really beneficial to what we're doing here. But one of the ones that were close to my heart was the work that we've been doing around anti-racism, uh, you know, and making sure that harassment and those sorts of things don't continue in the sector. So that was really cool. Um, the last thing I want to say is, Mayor, you talked about partnerships and how important it is to develop those partnerships. What I've learned at that table and what I experienced all the days that I was in Toronto was exactly that. The partnerships that we have struck are not just here in Newfoundland and Labrador anymore. They're from all corners of this country because of the work that we've been able to do with me sitting at that board table over the last three years. It was an absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal experience. And I truly do hope one of these days that I get to watch one of you guys do the exact same thing. So that's my presentation and um, overview of the FCM AGM and conference. Thanks. Excellent. Thank yep. you very much. All right. Now for our big festivities. The most night. important part. <laughs> yeah, so uh, do you have the names wrote down now? Because I was what I was gonna do, I was just gonna get up there and, and pass the chair over to the deputy mayor and then she could call out or I could call them out. Yeah, okay. And I'll get up there and we'll do the we'll do the pictures and everything. All right, Deputy Mayor? Uh what do you I'm gonna get up there and you can you take can, over. Okay, you got the names there? You can just yeah, I got it here. There. Don will take pictures from Okay, so you're ready to yeah. ready to go? Okay, so what is a mayor and what does a mayor do? Um, we had 123 entries and the kindergarten uh, winners are Rhea Critch, age six. Marin Sparks, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, age five. Not here? Not here. Okay. Nathan Hayward. Okay. Next we have grade one is Brooklyn Taylor, age six. 
Brooklyn's not here. Okay. Grade two, Caden Soper, age seven. Next, we have Emily Cake, age seven. Yeah. important things. Next we have um, Riley Cook, age seven. Not here? <laughs> okay. Haley Earl, age eight. Grade three, Adriana Rousel, age Next, we have Rachel Kell. Next, we have Lillian Jobst, Jobst or Jobst. There. Okay. <laughs> now we have Gray Fours. And we'll start off with Charlie Witten, age nine. Henry Mann. Not here. Okay, and last we have uh, Emily Horno.
the younger people get in the front, and the big tall ones get in the back. <laughs> All right, who's in? for the whole meeting if you don't want to, but we really don't mind if you do or not. Mm -hmm. However, if you decide that you want to go, I just want to say before you go that I really appreciated all the uh, drawings that you did and the words that you wrote about what what is a mayor and, and uh, what do a mayor do. And uh, I look forward, I, I mean, I went through all of your drawings and pictures myself and CAO and uh, looked at every one of them and read every one that you put in so thank you very much for that and it was uh, a lot of fun and we had a lot of entries and uh, you guys did a great job and go out and buy nanny something with your money mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. all righty Mayor's report. Um, yeah, I just thought, yeah, you can leave whenever you want. Question and answer. <laughs> Craig, we question and answer. Yeah, we, we forgot question and answer when we did the agenda. Can we have that, please? I'll do that now. Yes, that's yeah. before yours. All right, so yeah. it is okay. Uh, thank you. See you later. Take care. Congratulations, everyone. See you later. <coughs> Next time. All right, I forgot to ask when we were adopting the agenda, but is there anybody that wanted to get on the first Q&A? Yes. Can I get your name, please? Mike Manning. Mike Manning. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, well, I'm here about the tower. Oh, I can't talk about it. So you're going to have to talk to Deputy Mayor. Do we have to leave the room? Right. Uh, no, it. we're not making a decision. We're not making a decision, so you question. can stay, yes. Yes or no? Uh, yes, no, no. Carry <laughs> on. Yeah. Okay. Well, as you know, uh, we got uh, 80 some odd names on the petition for the residents in there that don't want the tower for a lot of uh, reasons. Health is the most one. So I'm not going to go through it all. It was on the, it's on the petition that we sent in. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, there's a few things here. Uh, I spoke with uh, Joanne Thompson's office today and her assistant, uh, Paula. And she told me that uh, the federal government don't have all the say into it. So it's between the town, mostly between the town and uh, whoever got the application in Bell or Rogers or whoever. I mean, this is interesting here. This is the one that Julia presented when we were up to the hearing. I mean, this is from the town of Torbay and it says, number seven, Torbay Council has the legal authority to refuse the application at its discretion in accordance with the Torbay Development Regulation 215 to 225. As far as I'm concerned, this says it all right there. But anyway, uh, this guy from Bell, uh, he seemed to think otherwise. Now, I mean, he was involved in a, in a, starting to direct a tower in Mount Pearl. And it had to be moved. I mean, I don't see why he can't move it down here. Geez, I got a name wrote down by company, I'm the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anybody got anything to say? Where's Colin? So. 
Okay. You, okay. <laughs> Hi, uh, yes, yeah, so my name is Colin Hearns. I'm the owner and resident of uh, One Burn East Drive. Uh, I'm Mike's neighbor down the road, and uh, we've basically been talking about this with one another since day one, uh, since we received our uh, letter of notification of what the application was in the mail uh, a few years ago. Um, certainly, I, th I think the first thing I would say is if I knew I was going to be dealing with this situation, I probably wouldn't have moved uh, where I did uh, if I had the foresight and, and a crystal ball, uh, just because this is not something that uh, I moved uh, to this town with the intention of uh, raising my family in and, and spending the next several years of my life in a house until I can't get up over the stairs and have to move. Uh, that's why I came here, uh, instantly was caught by the rural charm, uh, something valued and uh, especially when you can find something so great so close to uh, the city where kind of uh, all the infrastructure is that you need and, and where we all, uh, where the majority of people work. Uh, I reviewed kind of the application or uh, the documentation on the, on the website and the meeting agenda today and uh, just kind of noticed uh, there was a few things in that. Um, that I'd like to comment about. Uh, one comment there is that this service uh, to other residents of Torbay and Flat Rock uh, outweighs the concerns and the impact on the few residents that live up in our neighborhood and our area. I uh, feel personally that uh, you know council and, and people who represent us uh, should be doing what serves all residents and benefit all equally, uh, not sacrifice a few for the masses. And uh, there's another comment in there about the tree line and that blocking out the siding of the tower. Uh, I'm yet to, to find a tree out around here that's, that's 100 feet tall and it's going to block out that sight line. There's certainly none in my backyard or the backyards up the road. And standing anywhere in the back of my house and looking out any window this structure is going to impose itself on my daily life and the life of my family. Uh, the only way that we won't be able to see it for my property is if we're in the front of our house or if we're standing uh, directly down on the tree line, which is about 100 feet away from the back of my house. You know, this has been something that's caused uh, some of the residents of this area a lot of anxiety since it's come to light. Uh, you know, some people have been actively involved, but when Mike Manning went around with a petition and every resident in the area with the exception of one household signed on to it, I think it, uh, it made a statement of where the community's opinion stands on this issue. And you know, we're not opposed to development of infrastructure and uh, doing things that benefit people, but we certainly feel that you know, this structure can be moved a lot further away or into a better location that doesn't impose itself on any of the residences or the properties that are around the, the area. You know, this has been something that's been a part of our lives and been on our mind how it's going to all play out for the last several years. And I know I'm probably not the only one who's uh, felt some anxiety about it and uh, concerned about the future for my family and myself as well as my neighbors. And I'll just make uh, one last comment. Is, uh, Mr. Tapper alluded to earlier, uh, he mentioned that this is known as beautiful Torbay. I would, I would ask the question, if something like this went in your backyard, would you look out and feel that it was beautiful anymore? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Did somebody from the planning committee want to address our, we actually got, it's coming up in the package, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. All right, thank you. Thank you. So I just want to add that there is a motion coming up later on in the in the package on this, so we're, uh, you can't speak to it, so okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So, now, go ahead. Hi, I'm Dana Kelly yeah. of BDP Rentals. Um, I'm just here about the past previous applications that we had put in for 1235 Torrey Road. I'd just like it tabled that we want those withdrawn or rescinded. 
whatever we need to do and we want to move forward with the new application that we have for combining the property and to allow the parking of equipment the same as what we have at the property next door. Okay. So that's noted? Okay. No. I, I, is, yeah. there, is there any issue in doing no, no. that? Because we have made that clear. Okay. No, no, that's fine. I, I just said, did she get it? Okay. To make sure, because you wanted a table. Okay. So you yep. can table it. So that, that uh, particular application that was in the package was uh, removed from the package for tonight. Mm -hmm. So somebody from staff and, and the committee uh, will get back to you. Okay, so the application was put in on June 2nd. No, I Is talk about the old one that you were talking about, mm. that you wanted to withdraw. You wanted to withdraw. Yes. It's in the package tonight, right, Julia? And that Councillor Pollard asked to have it removed, so it's not going forward tonight. Yes. So then we'll get back to you and, and discuss what it is that you were just talking about. Okay. Okay. All right. Sure. Thank you. Can I just jump in there? Because it is the June 2nd application that is in got, the package. We got emails about it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm just oh. saying that because that's why Dana might be I'm oh, looking yeah, at it. Yeah, like, I face. mean, I, I thought that was going to be tabled that was tonight. In there. Okay. You know, there, that was my understanding from the beginning. I made it clear when I put the new application in that the other one was not, we were going to refuse that. Okay. And we were going to put in a new application. Right. And that's what we did. But nothing was done with the new application okay. as I such. Saw, I saw your emails today. Yeah. And I know that the committee is going to take those in its entirety. Okay. And then and get back to you. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. <clears throat> okay, we done? Yeah, I yeah. just... All right, thank you. Did Tony or somebody want to speak to that? Because it is confusing uh, for everybody. I was going to speak to it now. I would mention it at, at, during the planning portion, but <coughs> myself and Dana had conversations this afternoon. As for it being in the package, this package was done up, I guess, prior to our conversation today, so best we could do at this point in time was to remove the existing one from the application or from the uh, agenda and uh, I had asked earlier today that we process the application as was presented and in conversation I had with Dana today as well we thought this was the most expedient way for us to work through this process and uh, you know I apologize for anything that, that might have been misconstrued or were thought otherwise but we thought that was the best way out but we have no certainly no objection to processing the application as, as originally put in with all the necessary work that needs to go with it. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, mayor's report. It's got uh, <clears throat> first I'm just gonna run through the staff birthdays for the month of June. Scott Martin on the 23rd, Julia Schwartz playing development on the 25th, Leon, Leon Harris infrastructure and public works on the 26th, Emily Sampson recreation and community services on the 26th, Jason Slade planning development on the 28th. Happy birthday everybody, I hope you have a, uh, a good time with your family and friends and uh, many more. Alrighty, and the other thing I just wanted to mention was uh, yesterday at the Tulip Festival opening that we did, we did have some art on display for one of our young artists, Amelia Coughlin, Coughlin. and uh, she, I got to say, she was a delight. Anyway, I purchased this from her. It's beautiful. This drawing that she had, and I know that the Anne purchased her other piece of art that she had. The only advice I would give her, her drawing is are excellent, but when she's putting prices on something, she should jack the price up a little bit because I would pay more than what I did. <laughs> and so would so would the end. But uh, on a tanker, she was there all day yesterday with her parents, and uh, they really thoroughly enjoy, love going to the History House and Museum and being able to look and see their art on display there, and, and for people to see 
and uh, it was great to see for her. I think she's 12 years old, and uh, that's why that place is up there for people like that. So, I anyway, think that is it. I don't have uh, I don't have anything else to report on there. Okay, business rising report. Anything to do with that? Anybody have anything? Your Worship, I didn't uh, notice anything on the uh, or the deer uh, donation that we had spoke about. I don't know if that's come back through yet or not. And I know uh, Director Norma's not there at the present time, so I'm not sure if there's an update on that. Uh, the director was reaching out to the RNC to uh, confirm the uh, requirements for next school year and also the population breakdown as well too. So my understanding is it's coming back to the next corporate services uh, committee meeting for a recommendation back to council for the July meeting. Thank you. Okay. Any other items? Good. Okay. So we have a correspondence here from the Department of Children and Senior Social Development memo uh, about accessibility planning session. So we forward that on, on to the staff where we're going to go. The directors of uh, infrastructure and public works and uh, recreation and community services are reviewing that and they're participating in the upcoming webinar. Okay, perfect. And we do have our update there from FCM that Council Rep we talked about already earlier for information. And we have a correspondence for the Department of Municipal and Provincial Affairs Capital Investment Plan approval, and that is for our road upgrades for that are coming forward. That's there for information purposes. Okay. Committees of Council, Planning Land Use Development. Councillor Pollard. Thank you, Your Worship. Item number one is it relates to a, a home office, uh, an 11 where it is named. Uh, the office is due to a drywall and plastering business. So the motion here to conditionally approve application BR 2023-006 for a proposed home office in association with the drywall and plastering business at 11 Burdens Lane in accordance with regulations 33 and 90 and that a conditional development permit, permit to operate is issued subject to standard conditions for home office use in the town of Forbay. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. <coughs> Carried. The next item up is the... See ya. Yeah, I'm going to have to step out for this one and uh, hand the chair over to the Deputy Mayor. Mayor and Councillor Manning, under the new Code of Conduct, uh, you don't have to leave the room. You can sit in the gallery and you just don't speak to the issue. If you prefer, you can follow past practice and, and go in the back room and then come out once the vote has been taken. But under the new Code, you can you can sit in the chambers. Okay, Councillor Pollard. Okay. Thank you, Worship. In the, uh, as you know, all the information is there. The discussion around this, this cell tower has gone back for you know, a good few months now, I guess, and, and through the appeal process and uh, through other discussions we've had with, with Bell and with residents, and really still ongoing in some respects. Our latest, I guess, attempt at, at resolving the issue and trying to find a, a solution that works for both sides was to actually ask Bell to come in and sit down and have a meeting with us and the residents so that they could address all the concerns and explain the choice of locations, why we can't go somewhere else, and, and things of that nature. But uh, the last response was that you know they didn't, as far as they were concerned, they had done everything that was necessary to be done and that, that they just wanted a decision to counsel. Now, this decision of the council, I guess, is, is sort of different than, than other decisions in that we approve or disapprove, and uh, council has the final say. This gets tangled in that the, apparently the federal government has some say in it as well. Exactly how much and what their process is will not be fully understood, I guess, until it actually goes.
goes through the process if necessary. So depending on how the outcome of, of this motion comes forward, uh, then that, that would be the, the next step. So the recommendation of the committee is, is to uh, issue a letter of non-concurrence, which is one of the two uh, options that we have, either to concur or not to concur. Uh, but based on our uh, dealings with, with Bell in particular, I guess, and the uh, need to discuss further with all the residents in the area, uh, we have to come to this decision. So the motion here is motion to issue a letter of non-concurrence to Bell Mobility and the Department of Innovation, Science, Economic Development Canada related to the proposed installation of a 30 meter high cell tower at 81 Kent Kerry Road, file C 2021 081, as the town's request to hold a public meeting between Bell Mobility, the town, and area <coughs> residents refused by Bell Mobility, and area residents' concerns not having been adequately addressed by Bell. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, discussion? I guess I. I discussed it in, in the preamble from what I was going to say, but if anybody else wants to step in, feel free. Uh, as a member of the committee, I just want to say, and we've, we've been, uh, we visited the area, we talked to some of the residents there, we know their concerns, this has been ongoing now for, for the second term of council. So, uh, but the thing that I'm kind of upset about is the, you know, the, the guy that we're, uh, was representing Bell, He's, uh, some of the language that he put in his, his letters, uh, you know, uh, about the whole issue, really, uh, I don't think are, are adequately uh, tell Bell's position, you know. And I think if we're going to, uh, and as Mr. Manning alluded to, uh, the uh, MP now has come into this conversation. So if we're going to make it, write a letter, send a letter, I think we should copy the MP as well just to, to keep her in the loop and, uh, you know, uh, anybody and, and the, the local MHA, whoever, you know, to, to just let them know where, where we're headed for this because it is a letter of non-concurrence and uh, we don't know where this is going to end up still. So I think we still got to pursue it on behalf, of, you know, there was quite a few residents and they got a legitimate uh, grief, you know, because these towers are um, especially you know, the people uh, who just moved there, uh, bought lands, and didn't notice this issue even existed. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm totally in favor of this approach. Thank you. Anyone else? Councilor Appleby? Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, you know, to this point, um, I'm actually on Industry Canada's website right now, and it says here there's a five step process. It says, share is a new tower necessary. <coughs> I asked Dom. Is it okay to proceed? No, I just ask you got the, uh, the time. time, so yeah, the time's around. Okay. So share, propose, notify, consult, and build. <coughs> it says here the company at consult, the company must consider the, com the community's views. Impasses are rare. However, 0.1% of the cases require Industry Canada's decision. Industry Canada, according to this, is saying that the community decides where this goes. This motion talks about Bell not even willing to meet with the residents and have a conversation. And the concerns of the residents have to do with their health care, the proximity. The view was one part of it, but the residents have been contacting me and they're saying, we don't know what this is going to mean in a health perspective. And there's not enough data or information available to tell anybody with sound, safe abilities that this is going to be a benefit in their area <coughs> of the neighborhood. So I think that, yeah, I'm all for the letter of concurrence, but I think right now what we need to be talking about is going back to Bell and saying, if you want to put a tower in our community, the community is telling you, not in this location, find a location that is not near these people's homes and come meet with our people, have a conversation, and let's find a solution that works for everybody. But I would, I would even suggest a friendly amendment tonight to the motion, if council would entertain it, to, to, to send a letter back to Bell and say, you, you've refused the process of engaging and communicating with our residents and what, with us in this way. And so we are going back to you and saying, sorry, this is, we're not moving forward with this. I mean, the letter of non-concurrence, when these residents walk out the door tonight, what comfort is that for them, for them to know 
that this is not going to be in their backyard. One of the things they talk about is the stress of having this associated in your neighborhood. But what happens with the stress that they're experiencing now and have been for the last two years of wondering, could this be there? Is it going to impact the value of my home? Is it going to impact my health and my family's health? Fair questions. So I would ask council to maybe consider changing the motion a little bit, if it would be entertained, to, to say, listen, let's also not just have a letter of non-concurrence, but let's go back to Bell and say, enough of this. We need to go back and look at another location because this is not working for our community and our residents. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to add to that as well. I mean, I'd like to commend uh, Mr. Manning and, and the rest of the residents for, for taking a stand on this because first and foremost, if I think of if I had land or whatever in the area and to think of from a health perspective and from a site perspective, it's not something I'd want in my backyard. So I know myself and I think as a council, uh, I'll just speak for myself, but we're in total support of, of supporting our residents. Uh, I think Bell is taking such a short-sighted view on this that they could to move this tower down the road a little bit just to make it uh, you know, amicable for everybody. I, I don't think it's too much to ask. So uh, I agree with Councillor Appleby and the rest of Council that we need to take a, a harder stance on this and uh, you know, make sure that, uh, that we're helping our residents you know, as far as what happens with any kind of technical stuff. You know, it's going to happen uh, whether here or somewhere else, but we're going to take a stand for our residents on this one. Okay. So can we consider a friendly amendment to the motion? Sorry. Go ahead. No, could I just comment? Yes, I... Oh, okay, I, there's no back and forth. You've already... Sorry, you've already yeah. spoke to okay. the motion. I just need a, a point of clarification to both Councillors Appleby and Goss that the planning committee met with Bell and um, they're not willing to entertain ident identification of additional sites by the town. They followed the process. We met with the appraiser and um, representative from Bell and uh, Councillors Tapper, Deputy Mayor and, and I believe Councillor Pollard was there as well as the director myself. Um, t that we can speak to that matter. That's why it's been such a delay in bringing a recommendation. Really, the last resort the town has now is the letter of uh, disconcurrence or non concurrence. Yep. Okay, so I do know from the bit of history that I've had on that a lot of what we're recommending and going back that that has taken place, and that's why this letter of non concurrence is coming forward while you were out of town because I sat in on that committee. So I guess I'll uh, last call the question. All oh, hold on, Deputy Mayor. Mm. I've asked about a friendly amendment and I've asked what's the difference of the letter of non-concurrence and telling Bell, changing the motion to tell Bell that we're not gonna support a tower if this is how they're engaging with us and our residents. Can you take over as chair? After the meeting? Yes. Sure, yeah. Okay. So. While Councillor um, Tapper was away, that was what the committee decided on. And actually, uh, when Director Swartz was out of town, that they went back and exactly what you are saying to put in as a friendly amendment, we went back to them and they went back in writing and asked for a change um, in location and to have a meeting with everybody. Is that right? I mean, that's the way that it went down. And myself and Councillor Pollard were there. And what you're saying to put in as a friendly amendment, that's the action that was taken. That's why, and it's in the motion, that's why they're going back and saying to uh, say that it's non-concurrent. So, so, so is this non-concurrent motion telling Bell that they can't put that tower there, period? That's my understanding. Director. Director. Yeah. Yeah. Just as a little bit of extra background, um, the committee at the time had gone back to Bell and asked for other sites to be considered, and they did go back and considered other sites, um, uh, and then deemed those, there was three other sites they reviewed, and they deemed those not suitable. And um, so that's when it went back and then there was a request made to meet, uh, to basically arrange for this meeting um, with residents to explain really why that one particular 
location that's currently proposed is the best location from Bell's perspective um, and to kind of hear out the residents. And from Bell's perspective, they felt they, they that they did explore and they genuinely, that's kind of how they phrased it to staff, that they generally did explore those three locations and they're not feasible. Um, there, there's too many compromises, so the sites are all compromised from their perspective. So, um, so ultimately, it's now gone back to the motion dealing with that one specific site. So for the friendly amendment, just one further piece, if the director could outline for everyone the, because this matter was appealed, went to the Eastern Regional Appeal Board, and what the decision of the Appeal Board is, and that's why the motion is coming forth on uh, non-concurrence. Yeah, and the, so the Appeal Board ruled that council shall vary its decision. So um, while there might be some interpretation, really, ultimately the direction is that we can't, or you as council can't really either uh, refuse it or approve it, but you can either issue a letter of concurrence or in accordance with federal guidelines, you can also issue the letter of non-concurrence. Um, of course, Bell is hoping for the letter of, con uh, of concurrence because from their perspective, they feel that they've met all the review requirements for the file. Um, but really, the requirement right now is council is bound by the um, appeal board's direction to to vary the decision. So you kind of it's time really has come to make to vote on it. Um, and whatever that may be, either the letter of concurrence or non concurrence. And the motion right now on the table is the letter of non concurrence because um, there really wasn't a willingness on behalf of Bell to meet with the residents and um, that was the wish of from committee to to arrange for this meeting so that that hasn't happened so but is there an ability to add to the motion that's what I'm trying to get at with the amendment to say I, I support the motion that we have here that that's not a problem what I'm what I'm wondering is can we add to the motion to state that um, be, be, just to be a little more specific about what the letter of non-concurrence means so that the residents when they go home tonight can rest a little better with us saying no we don't agree with this location I hear you director that Bell says it suits them and they've been quite strong in their language according to the the, 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 the information that's been back and forth in Councillor Tapper you, you, you address that but they can be as strong in their language and it can suit them as much as it, do, as it wants to or not at the end of the day you know, like our fellow counselor said, our job is to look after our residents in our community. And I'd like to see if we could add some language to this to make sure that it's clear or that we are not supporting this tower in that location. I don't know if that language is strong enough. That's the question I'm putting before council. Do we need to add anything? Councillor Pollard? Else? Yeah, You're uh, the chair. The, the conversation is backing up into a corner that we really can't be in from a council perspective. We already went down the road and refused the application. We went through the appeal board process, so the appeal board came back and told us to bury it. And the way we <coughs> have to vote out is through an issue of concurrence or non-concurrence. So we can say is non-concurrent, and that's, that's probably as strong as we can get with a letter saying then that based on everything we know, this is not an acceptable place for the town, and according to us and uh, I'll say Canada, for lack of a better word, requires better communication between the community and Bell to determine a, a, a suitable site for the location of a cell tower. Mm -hmm. And then my understanding is that based on that response and whatever ISDD, uh, Environment Canada, comes back with, they have to go through the process then to weigh, I guess, both sides and, and ultimately make the final decision however they want to. I expect they will tell us that we go back to the table and talk about what sites are suitable. And, and that's something that really Bell has not done. They picked a site and said, this is it, and move forward. But right now, they don't have a letter of concurrence. So they have to go back to Environment Canada to determine how to move forward at this point. OK, so I'm call question. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. At number three, we removed and uh, it will come back in the form of the new application. Um, so there's been Don and, and Dan spoke to that. And last motion is the motion to accept permit listings for weeks ending June 8, 2023. That's table. So moved. Second. Just getting everybody else back here, Tony. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. All right, we're two. <coughs> Second. Hang on now. <coughs> There's a motion before that for. Oh, never mind. Okay, carry on. Yeah. Okay, mover, seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. The remainder of the report, the uh, Environment Committee minutes are there as of, of May 16th. Uh, WSP has an update. Apparently, they're going to be. <coughs> Uh, mid July to come back and give us the uh, study mm -hmm. and information that they promised in terms of connectivity of uh, um, to the existing infrastructure and how that would look moving forward and, and timelines and hopefully the cost associated with that. So just look forward to that and then we can uh, hopefully put the, our water issues uh, on a better track than the air at the present time. Okay. Other questions <coughs> for your reading and summary of my report to worship. Take sure. I just ask a question um, with regards. We will have another meeting with regards to uh, an update on Grey Pond. Just wondering if there's a date that we have um, for this for June for that update. Thank you, everybody. Good night. It's anticipated that the um, uh, uh, draft. Uh, one report, the treatment options report, is anticipated fairly shortly, middle of this month. The distribution uh, systems study is expected towards the um, 20th of July and an update uh, within the first two weeks of August. So they will present, WSP will present to council. We have to find a suitable time for everybody. I'll deal with Don on that uh, for presentation to committee the whole. Okay, no, thank you. Um, just a question here on the um, minutes from the TEAC meeting. It talks here about buffers that have to do with proposed amendments to the mineral workings documentation. Isn't that part of what we will be doing with our municipal plan review and overview? Is that something that should be a part of that or is that something that we're looking at doing separately? I'm just trying to get an understanding of how that process works. I'm, I'm very excited to see that the recommendations that are in here, you know, were the ones that were being made about protecting the spaces, but I'm just trying to understand the process because we are doing the municipal planning review. And I know as part of that planning review, we're gonna be looking at, you know, some of those things as well. So I just wanted to get a better understanding of what is, what is happening with that? Is this recommendation going to be brought back as part of the work that's being done with the municipal plan over the next three years? It does say here that there's a motion that could be coming on it sooner and later. So can I just get a better understanding of what that is and what's happening in that space, please? Sure, Julie, I'll let you answer that in one second. From what my understanding is, is, Trina, is that both really, it will form part of the parcel of the municipal plan and as well, as it's a recent uh, addition brought forward by the Environment Committee staff have had a chance to actually review it for wording and in incorporation into existing uh, policies, I would say. So Julie is going to uh, review that and, and see that the wording and everything else fits properly and then so maybe a motion to do that prior to the final uh, incorporation into the municipal plan. But certainly will be discussion at the municipal plan level as well. Julie, if I'm not correct, you can Nope, that's, that's exactly 
Right. So there may be, like you said, the possibility of amending our existing mineral working conditions that are in effect right now. So that, that is an amendment that can be done by motion of council. So we will review and then bring it back through, um, bring it forward through uh, the plot committee. And then same thing at the municipal plan review level, we can look at the language that's currently in the municipal plan and if there's any tightening of language council wishes to take on that matter. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, admin HR. Councilor Manning. Okay. We have a memo there. Uh, there's no minute meetings. We didn't have a uh, meeting. There's one coming up uh, this Thursday. But uh, we have a memo there from the C. AO and it's concerning uh, two draft policies uh, that was sent to council for review uh, with a deadline for feedback that was April the 13th and feedback on the 20th and uh, brought it forward to the committee of the whole on May the 8th and it was recirculated re uh, for review and comment by May the 22nd and at that point there was no feedback received so we have uh, Motion one, the town of Torbay adopt the post job posting policy as pre presented effective June 13th, 2023. So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Question. Question. Um, under length of posting, it says here post positions will be posted for a minimum period of five working days or another time period is deemed appropriate. That seems to be a really short turnaround window for <coughs> posting a public position. Um, I would suggest that we consider changing the five working days to a two week period, if that's possible, please. That's normal practice standards, and at least then it gives fair and equal opportunity to get the best candidates. You know, I mean, if, if you, we have a, um, a consultant hired even to do work around this and to do headhunting and, and that sort of stuff. It takes time by the time you have your work schedule, meetings, you know, trying to, to, to facilitate that time frame. I think five, five, you know, a minimum of five working days is too short. So I would ask for that amendment, please. Just to, I guess, add further information under scope. Um, it says this policy applies to job posting process for all job vacant vacancies at all locations of town where any provision of this policy conflicts with the terms of the collective agreement. The collective agreement will prevail. So the 1822 collective agreement has uh, posting um, that a position has to be uh, uh, posted internally for five days and then it goes external and that any vacant position should be filled within 40 uh, working days with the proposed 2022-26 agreement that's moved down to 35 days. So we can amend if you wanted to, I don't, a <coughs> CAO, I don't have an issue with, with 10 days. The reason the five was there because of internal posting, so. And internal postings would be for people who are part of the union who will be seeing that when they come into the workspace. I think for this, for all positions, you know, especially ones that are not unionized, I would ask the council <coughs> consider the amendment from five days to 12. Give two weeks where people have the opportunity to review, have a look at it, and make sure we've got the best qualified candidates, uh, you know, working on behalf of the residents. So then at that time, if we put something like put in, say, 10, 10 day, 10 working days. The rest of that sentence, another time period as deemed appropriate, probably not necessary then, would it be? Yeah, I would say a minimum of 10 working days. And take out the other part. Okay. Hang if on we can make that amendment. Before, before we do it, I will, I will say this. Yeah. That it's this policy was circulated twice to council for feedback and discussed at the community to hold. Yeah. And now here we are at yeah. the last minute when it's coming forward making amendments and I don't think that's fair to anybody that they've worked on this that did all that stuff so you know I just I just had to say that yeah. because uh, 
You know, it's uh, it's really unfortunate that this is coming at the last minute and that we now we're looking at making changes after it was in council's hands for And that's that's what I started a week, with. And then another two weeks and a meeting. Mm -hmm. I mean three weeks or more, a month, two months. Uh, I understand, you know, Councillor Appleby's points and bring it up, but also too, you know, the opportunity has been given for everyone to review and to respond. I don't know how much longer you need to. So respectfully, yeah. I'm going to request that council consider amending the policy to 10 days. It's one request that I'm making. I'm not making multiple requests, it's just one. And I'm asking that council consider it. If council chooses not to consider it, that's council's prerogative. But I'm asking that council consider making that amendment before we vote on the motion because that will decide how I vote on the motion. So should I move that we make that amendment and see if someone seconds it? And then from there, we'll go back to the regular motion? Okay. Okay. So I'd like to make that motion then, please. Move that we change the scope from five days to, and I'll go 10 days, um, for the minimum amount of time that it's, a position is advertised, please. So moved. Do you have a seconder? No seconder, okay. Motion fails. Okay. Thank you. Any other comment on the motion? Yeah, I want to comment on that five days. I, the reason I didn't say anything about it is because there's a difference between posting and advertising. In my previous experience, posting for a minimum of five days is adequate. That doesn't mean that the position is only going to accept applications for that period. Posting internally relates to a, a most often a union idea, so that it, it kind of handcuffs you sometimes when you're trying to find the best candidate because you have to make sure you're, you use up a five day period for internal applications. It doesn't prevent anybody from applying outside that five working day period as well. It doesn't mean that the job won't even be advertised for five days. It means it'll be posted inter internally here for five days and anyone who looks at it can get a chance to apply. It still it gives the town the opportunity to advertise outside on an earlier time frame as well, rather than wait, say, 10 days to go outside. Yeah, uh, just to clarify as well, since I've been here, can you turn your mic phone? Yeah, I've tried, but for some reason okay. I can't. I can hear you, so it might be just working. Just for the record, we've never posted a position uh, externally since I've been here for, for five days. It's always been at least 10 business days, working days, or a few periods. And I think that it's in our best interest to continue with that approach and post externally for, for at least a 10 day period uh, to make sure that the message gets out there and that we do you know, attract the, the biggest. All right, go ahead. I uh, just want to put in there with regards to that time limit at, as the bare minimum that it has to be posted because for all of these policies, I'm one that if it was up to me, there wouldn't be any. Because all we're doing once again is boxing ourselves in because we don't know when there's going to be a position come up now that we need to move on really quickly and somebody's going to say we have a motion for this and they should almost be put in practice for a period of time before we actually adopt them. So based on that is the reason why I looked at that. So it's again, it's the bare minimum as Councillor Pollard was looking at and we need to make sure, I would say that they're a living document because the last thing that we wanna do or from a HR perspective is have something in a policy that for whatever reason we can't move on something quickly or longer or whatever the issue is. So we have to be very careful on what we are, I guess, um, accepting here and know that they can be changed at any given time because since I've been here on council, I would say 90%, I would say, of policies, we're looking at them and say, what do we do this? Like, because we really don't have 
uh, a full idea and why we're even doing these because they weren't even an urgent one that had come up somewhere along the way. So I'm fine with it and looking at, well, I understand what Council Appleby is saying. I'm saying at least that's a minimum amount and we shouldn't be boxing ourselves in. So that's just my take on it, so. And if I, can I speak? <laughs> I also feel that, like the last part of that sentence, or another time period as deemed appropriate, yes, says covers time frames yep. and the union parts of it and things. So I feel we're covered. Mm -hmm. But if this moves forward as well, is, no. it gives us already, a minimum five days spoken. turnaround. You already spoke to that. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> okay. Can I just comment? Did you comment on it yet? Nope. Go ahead. <clears throat> I just want to say uh, a thank you to the committee because this is not the first policy that we've dealt with, uh, you know, uh, over the last few months. A lot of time and effort has mm -hmm. gone into it, and I take direction from the committee. I know there's been re some research done on this, and I read it, and, like, again, I agree with, with uh, Deputy Mayor that, you know, there needs to be some flexibility because we may change this next week, and with this or any other policy that we... You know, the, these policies are badly needed, long overdue. So let's see where they go, and, and uh, hopefully they're effective. Okay. So I'll just have my quick say on it in regards to policies. The staff needs direction on what it is council wants them to do. And this is how that happens. When we create policies, we adopt them. It gives staff direction on, on where to go and what to do. And as always, every policy is al always a living document that can be updated, changed as circumstances arise when we realize that something needs to be done. But I'm good. Okay, back to the chair. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Carried. Next motion. The Town of Tour Bay adopt the interviewing and selection of candidates policy effective June the 13th, 2023. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carry. Thank you. And uh, <coughs> right now that's it for HR. All right. Thank you very much. <coughs> Corporate Services, Councilor Tepper. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first thing we have to deal with, I gotta get this up here. Uh, there's a memo from our CAO uh, re with a required motion, investing in infrastructure program and approval letter on the water treatment phase two funding. So, I w will not read the letter, but just go right through to the motion, as uh, it was in the package. So be it resolved that the ultimate recipient, the Town of Torbay, accept the cost-shared funding as outlined in the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure Project Approval Letter dated the 26th day of May 2023. Project number 17-GI-24-00018 project name North Pond Water Treatment Plant Phase 2 with a total project value of $3 million. This council agrees to provide the ultimate recipient share value of 816151 in funding for this project and authorizes the mayor and chief administrative officer slash town clerk to enter into a funding agreement with the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure on behalf of the town of Torbay. So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Comment. Yeah, it, this is really good news for the residents of Torbay. We've been working on this as long as I've been around this table and trying to find clean, effective drinking water options that are feasible and viable for residents has been a top priority and continues, in my opinion, to be a top priority for the town of Torbay. So I'm very excited to see that this um, phase two allocation has been put in place and we're moving towards you know finally achieving those goals so um it's great cause for celebration <coughs> excuse me yeah. agreed any other comment all in favor 
Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Okay, we'll go to the corporate services report for the June 12th uh, council meeting. Uh, read into the record payroll, regular payroll for 50 employees for the two week period and the June 2nd, 2023 total $107,467.56. Accounts payable for the two week period and the June 2nd, 2023 invoices in the amount of $119,007.02 were processed. So we have some, count, uh, some invoices for uh, council approval. There's four operating invoices totaling <coughs> 25,068.66. So invoice number 2025-25, Howell <coughs> Municipal Consulting, 5,750. Invoice 3002198486, SNS Supply Suite, uh, 7,164.50. Invoice January dash April 2023, Torbay Volunteer Fire Department, 6,404.16. Uh, invoice 221984, Triware Technologies, 5,750. So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 So there's one capital invoice. Opposed, carried. I was just watching Tony. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, there's one capital invoice, uh, invoice number 6101, Bercy Excavating and Development, Inc., 37,448.85, so moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. So we have some uh, committee motions. So motion number one, equipment financing, 2023 JCB rubber tire backhoe. The town is purchasing a 2023 JCB rubber tire backhoe in the amount of 226,754 plus HST. The financing required is 236,475 as the town is only permitted to finance the 4.286% non-refundable portion of the, of the HST paid. Rate, cro rate quotes were requested from Scotiabank, TD Bank, RBC, and the NLCU. The lowest three year rate quote was received from NLCU. So it's a three year term at 5% interest. Uh, the committee recommends awarding financing in the amount of 236,475 for the 2023 JCB rubber tire backhoe to NLCU for a three-year term and a seven-year amateurization at a rate of 5% with a monthly payment of 3,342.32. So moved. Seconded. Before, <coughs> before we vote on this, um, are there either of those loaders purchased through Canoe? The, I was thinking about that, right? So yeah. the decision has already been made by council to use canoe procurement to purchase those and then motions have already been done so this is motions to uh for financing and there's no mention of canoe anywhere in it. right but the financing is still tied to that transaction correct it's been approved but it's still a part of the transaction i think i may need to step away from this vote just to be 100 percent clear that um I don't, I don't want there to be a conflict uh, for us in I know, that space. I know what you're saying, but this irrelevant that this was any, anywhere, it's for the financing. The decision to deal mm -hmm. with canoe has been made before. Yeah. So this is, there's no mention to canoe anywhere here. This is just for financing. <coughs> that would be, Can that's, we ask that's my for feeling. Tom? That's correct, Mayor. Again, determining conflict is a vote of, is a vote of council. Um, <coughs> So that if Councillor Appleby feels well, the options are step away, right. or if you prefer a motion of council, then ask council to render the decision. Yeah. Let, yep. If I can ask, just to be covered, I just want to make sure we have. Um, you're right, Mayor. We have had a separate decision about this, mm -hmm. and I'm unsure because of the um, connection to the fact that it's it's a purchase that's been decided by council, but this financing is part of the uh, requirement to be able to make that purchase happen. So to my mind, 
Uh, I'm not entirely sure that there couldn't be a potential for a conflict. So I'd like to ask council to consider that and just to be sure that right. we've can got we, clear can, direction. Can we ask council to consider that on both of our behalfs, please? Can you get a motion to that effect? Please. If one of us are, we might as well make sure two of us are not, too. I guess a motion to see if Councillor Appleby and uh, sorry, Mayor Craig Scott are in conflict on the rubber back uh, rubber backhoe tire loader and the canoe, I guess, assessment. Is there a second? Who's Cherry? Mayor is Cherry. Now, I'm just, I was just going down over it because it pertains to the two. I'm thinking that there's two motions there. Right. So it would pertain to those to, to two of those. So, okay. Um, seconder. Second. Okay. Discussion. I didn't understand the motion. If you could read, uh, read so it. No. It's so could I state the motion just to be clear? Sure. The, the question is: If the, is the mayor? Are the mayor and I? in conflict of interest on the financing for both the JBC loader and JBC Baco, because those were purchased through Canoe and we are m &L board members. So although the decision's been made about the, the purchase decision, the, the question of conflict is around, are we in conflict where it comes to the financing piece of the financing decision? Because without financing, you can't purchase it. Related to the financing decision as it mm. pertains to two pieces of heavy equipment procured through canoe. Yeah, no, I didn't understand Councillor Gosses. I didn't know if it was they are in conflict or they're not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess either or. I said if we'll vote whichever way. that Your motion has to be a positive motion. So. Yes, so... <clears throat> That they are not in conflict. Mm -hmm. Okay. All but, right. So but it has been superseded at this point by, by I guess, Councillor Appleby. Mm -hmm. Are we. <coughs> so, what motion are we going with, uh, Anne? Are we going with the mm -hmm. one that Councillor Appleby put forward or the one that Councillor Goss? I'm assuming that it's the one that Councillor Goss put forward, seeing that Councillor Appleby is the one that's asking if she's in yes. conflict. So there's a motion Councillor Goss uh, put forward, uh, seconded by Councillor Tapper, that Councillor Appleby and the mayor are not in conflict. Okay. As it pertains As to it those pertains two to the motions. financing regarding the 2023 JCB rubber tire backhoe and the 2023 JCB rubber tire loader as both pieces of heavy equipment were procured okay. through canoe. Are you okay with that, Ann? Okay. So we have uh, somebody put forward a motion and a seconder for discussion. Yeah. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried that Mayor not. and Councillor Appleby are not in conflict. Okay, thank, and thank I, you. Could I make a point yep. for future consideration? Can we flag these types of yes. things? And, you know, because they're, they're going to come up again, obviously, okay. right? We spend quite a bit of time on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, yeah, so. I, I never even thought of it, to be honest with you. Because it was the financing part, right? So, anyway, thank you very much. Okay, so the motion is on the floor. Four is. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Dean, you, sir. So, motion two, equipment financing 2023 JC rubber tire loader. The town is purchasing a 2023 JCB rubber tire loader in the amount of 459995 plus HST. The financing required is 479710 as the town is only permitted to finance the 4.286% non-refundable portion of the HST paid. Rate qu quotes were requested from Scotiabank, TD Bank, RBC, and the NLCU. The lowest three-year rate quote was received from NLCU, which is a three-year term 
5.00%. Uh, the committee recommends awarding financing in the amount of 479710 for the 2023 JCB rubber tire loader to NL NLCU for a three-year term and seven-year amortization at the rate of 5% with a monthly payment of 6780 18 cents. Uh, so moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Carried. Motion three, Juniper Ridge Intermediate Donation Request. Juniper Ridge Intermediate is, ho Intermediate is hosting a sports banquet to recognize the outstanding achievements <coughs> of the school's athletes. Juniper Ridge has requested a donation to help cover the costs associated with the food and awards for the banquet. The committee welcomes the opportunity to recognize the young athletes within our town. In accordance with the town's donation policy, the committee recommends a donation in the amount of $200 towards the cost of hosting the student banquet. So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion, Aye. motion for child and youth care co-ed softball tournament. The committee received a request for the donation of a softball field to host a child and youth care co-ed annual softball tournament. The tournament raises funds to support an individual, individuals who may be in need and organizations such as Choices for Youth, pay, Waypoints, Key Assets, and Blue Sky. The committee, in, rec in recognition of the valuable work done by these organizations, recommends the don donation of the Torbay Softball Field for the tournament. So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Comments or questions? Couldn't this just, I, I don't know, couldn't this just been a decision made at staff level to let somebody use the ball field? Well, it's in kind, so. Yeah. I'm, just curious, I'm just curious because, you know. I don't, President I mean, I thought it was our understanding that we don't decide mm. free rental. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's president setting as well, so if it don't come to a committee, you could have these happening all the time and not know about it. Okay, all right. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. And I believe that covers my report, uh, Your Worship. Perfect. Thank you, sir. All righty then. Economic development. Can I just ask a question uh, that's in there and it's been, I guess, coming up and I just want to know where it's to? And that's, and maybe it's been done and I didn't realize it, but the it's two outstanding invoices for pilot. Um, that we were looking at and collecting the rest of the outstanding funding that's, I guess, with June Perry and where that that all is to right now. Because before we know it, we're going to be back into our budget again, and I still haven't, don't know what's happening there, other than I'm told that it's happening, but nothing is happening. So. I'm going to request that that uh, be brought back to our community hall meeting for a decision. It's after going back. I know, like, but it's not it's, coming out. It's come back. It's gone back, and they were. It was supposed to be looked at, and I understood that the motion was supposed to be that they were going to be paid, and an agreement had been made to for them to continue to collect the funding. So, to anyway, the no, donations that were made. So somewhere along the way, that's three months ago. I know. We, we did that, discuss that at our, at our meeting uh, the week, and uh, you know, it's still in limbo. We went to June Perry, and she's still adamant about getting the invoices paid. That was the decision first, that was made. You know, yeah. So, you know, it's still quite a, a substantial uh, number, uh, an amount of money, you know, uh, that, that was not collected. Uh, we uh, we gave some direction to director to have a talk to CAO and see even if we get the contact names of each of those uh, I think there's five or six don uh, firms that we you know we, we gotta we gotta move on this you know because they are substantial. Can I put forward a motion that we pay the two invoices <coughs> Actually, and get on um, with collecting the funding? Can, that's I, sp the can bear. I speak to this please well, as well? Well, just hang on. Mary, anyway, Mary. 
know. You don't go tossing pens around. Just I ju listen. If I want to put my pen down, <laughs> no, Councillor Goss, I can put it down. down. Yeah. I was Wait. in the middle of speaking Water. when you interrupted me. Water. Can I have a word on that, please, Mr. Please, Mayor? I want to get a clarification first before you do from okay. the CAO. So I know it was referred back to Corporate Services Committee. There was no recommendation. There was a recommendation. There wasn't. Um, and it was then agreed um, as our, on our business arising report that it would, become, it would come back to Committee of the Whole for discussion. Okay. So that's... That's where it is. So it's going to be on our agenda for our next meeting? Yes. Okay. When is the next meeting? Uh, next week, I think, is it? Or we don't have there that. hasn't been a date set, but okay. I'll follow up with the mayor and advise. So. Yep. All right. So then we'll deal with, we'll deal with it then. I don't, want to, I don't want to get into a big discussion about it now. There's no motion on the floor. We will we'll bring it back to the committee hall. We'll, we'll make a decision, and then that decision will move forward from the committee hall. Am I able to make a note here? We don't have the ability or authority to take decisions like the this. The decision will be made at the public council meeting. We will discuss it at the committee to hold, figure out where we're going to go forward. That's <coughs> what the minutes will reflect. Did it come forth to the public meeting yeah. for discussion, for ratification, or for decision? Not in committee of the whole, public, I, public council meeting. Yeah, I just want to make the point that the decision needs to be made in the public chamber, please. Yeah, Thank you. absolutely. So can I, I brought this up as a, as a question. Right. And we've talked about this any number of different times. So if I was to make, the, which I was in the process of making the motion, I guess when Councillor Goss had something that he wanted to say, and say, look, we are either going to make a decision on this or we're not, because come September, it's a year since we last talked about this in the last budget. So we're in the five or six years about this. Councillor Tapper just made the comment that if it's $20,000 and we're going to get four or 500 back, then that don't that make, uh, make it logical, common sense that we would have ended up letting me continue with my motion and to say to do this and like Councillor Appleby is saying and having the discussion here and make a decision on it rather than waiting. Now we gotta wait until the middle of July to come back to another council meeting. And it seems like we're just continuously spinning our wheels. So that's enough then for me to say on it. But anyway. I would still like to have something to say on that, quite frankly. You know, yes, this has been going on for quite a while. And uh, you know what, for what the actual money that uh, was taken in by this initiative and the fact that she wants to be paid her money before she'll g give us any more help, I am not in support of throwing any more good money after bad. So I'm just putting that out there. All right, thank you. And, and I, I guess that gets to the point of we couldn't come to an agreement at the committee, right? Uh, direction forward. Well, we made a recommendation there a few months ago, okay. right? That, right. that we, uh, we pursue. Right, uh, yeah. collection, and again, we it was tied, it got tied down into these two invoices that were outstanding. And you and somebody so, went to met with her. I understood too. She came so. in here actually. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So. So. Anyway. But you know, you got two. As far as I'm concerned, you got two options, right? Pay the pay the invoices, and right. and uh, but at the same time, what what can you do to force them to uh, to at least give us the names? We have the names. The, the links. Well, we na have names of the companies, but who, who's, who are the people that we, we should contact? Right. Yeah, you know? okay. I hear you. But the, the issue is right now, we don't have all available information we need to be able to really have a discussion about it. Because it's not in the package. It's not coming up for as a motion. So, you know, I wouldn't, be feel, I wouldn't feel comfortable making a decision on it right now, tonight. Yeah. Well, I, I would hope that we're going to meet next Monday night for a uh, committee to hold okay. and have this on the agenda. All right. Because it's a long I'll outstanding. Talk to, uh, I'll talk to CAO about yeah. that after. Yeah. All right. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you, sir. Economic development to tourism. Councillor Rathby. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, myself, Councillor Manning, and our Economic Development Tourism Officer, Deanne Lawrence, met on June 7th. Um, 
We have an update on the Pico Ridge Memorial Project. Um, had a look when I drove by there today. The site looks great, um, but uh, we're just waiting now for the temperatures to change so we can finish with the remainder of the install. Um, Economic Development Officer Lawrence has contacted the Manning family to provide an update. And I know this is a project that's important to the family, but also to many residents who have uh, great respect for, uh, for Mayor Manning. So uh, we're all really looking forward to this moving forward and having it uh, as a uh, wonderful space to, uh, to remember everybody who was lost on that uh, flight and to have many amazing uh, you know, young uh, children come in, reading experiences, quiet space for, for people to come reflect. It's, uh, it's gonna be a great asset in the community for sure. Uh, 1296 Torbay Road property update. We had a conversation about that. Right now, the um, lease needs to get sorted so we can get uh, potential pr proponents that are interested into the space to look around. So uh, we had a conversation around trying to get that wrapped up. Um, we talked about the Torbay wayfinding signage. Um, the um, uh, work is still continuing to move in that space and uh, looking for an, an expected installation in July. The Youth Entrepreneur Program, uh, that happened uh, in June. There was a total of five students presented their business plans to town staff and deputy mayor. I saw that on Facebook and thought, how cool is that? I would love to have been in that space. I didn't know what was happening, but what absolutely had to be brilliant to participate in. Um, the Juniper Ridge uh, experience has been amazing as well. There's been um, 13 essays submitted. Uh, a lot of excitement about what's happening in that space. The Holy Trinity Elementary communication, we're still working on that. Uh, Economic Development Officer was going to reach out again, uh, but to date we had uh, no submissions. And for the Torbay's maker, Torbay Makers Market, uh, during the meeting, I was sharing it everywhere I could on Facebook for the world to know, the town's post. Um, we had a, a total of three vendors registered, so we wanted to get the word out. And I know that there's been some interactions with those posts. Um, but really looking forward to showcasing the amazing people that we have, like the young artist that you uh, shared with us today, Mayor, and her work and let her know what upper prices and, and get a table, $15 to, to have a table and get out there and share your wares. It's great to see, um, you know, entrepreneurism happening in our community at all levels. Um, we've talked about the, the Tulip Festival earlier, so there's a note in there about that. Uh, the um, Economic Development Officer is helping with the Marketing Coordinator interviews. Uh, she's provided committee an update for her attendance at the uh, EDANL conference, which is the uh, Economic Development Association conference for the province. And since the last committee update, two additional business applications have been submitted to the town and a second request regarding an Airbnb. Uh, we uh, had a conversation about committee schedule and we're gonna follow the same one that we had last year. Um, and the next meeting will be scheduled for July. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to let me know. Okay, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, history, heritage, culture, and arts, Deputy Mayor. Okay, we didn't have a uh, meeting, so there's an update that's in there, and it's pretty straightforward for, I guess, the um, same basically report is that we had before the manager's report the different events that are taking place and the grants and funding are in there uh, attached and uh, it's <coughs> so if anybody's got any questions on that I know they've got a full plate taking place there uh, uh, which reminds me, CAO, that form that's there was going to be attached to all other committee meetings and that as well, you had indicated? Yes, so the Director of Recreation and Community Services has her uh, list in there and um, I was going to speak to the Economic Development Officer too about including the Pico's Ridge uh, yeah, funding so that's there really as well. Good. Yeah. All right, thank you. Don, just on that point, are we, I, I think it's important to have that information in the package, but are we reflecting who's participating in those? Because I know 
Dan often helps with the other applications. So can we have in there, like maybe in the, the updates that have been provided, who are working on those so that it's reflected yeah. that because oftentimes our staff members oh, are working together yeah. in collaboration yeah. and I think it's important to show that so if yeah. we could maybe add a column that said you know under the history house mm -hmm. it's Noah Deanne Jen maybe mm -hmm. maybe Jen's got <coughs> something that she's doing and it's Noah yeah. Deanne and we have that Jen in a template so I'll recirculate that to everybody so it's consistent yeah mm -hmm. yeah if we could do that that'd be great thank you can I just mention one Order quickly. Um, Wednesday, uh, we're asking for any volunteers if they have a few hours to come by because they're going to start the new exhibits, put, putting those together, because uh, we want that done by the July the first weekend and the anniversary for the History House opening as well. So if anybody Wednesday all day long, starting nine o'clock in the morning, a few of us are going to go over, but. We appreciate some help with heavy lifting and that sort of thing. Could so. we get that sent out? Maybe get Noah to send that out to everybody, because usually yeah. he he does. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Infrastructure and Public Works, Councilor Pollard. Thank you, Your Worship. We met on the seventh of June, eight fifteen. The Councilor Eppley and myself. Uh, the first item up was the phone here project. It, we should note that there was a change over in the company and they're going through some staff changes and they're trying to nail someone down to uh, actually come and get that final software installation done for us. So we can get it up and running. Um, so Brian stay on top of that. Trail development in a previous meeting on the trail development we had talked about uh, potential increases in cost uh, for, for numerous reasons, I guess. And the trail, the Colonel Amherst Monument uh, went from $24,000 bringing the cost up to $67,719.61. We received a grant for $16,323, which left us kind of short. Uh, but in order to make the, finish the trail work and make it completely accessible, accessible and, and it needs to be completely accessible, uh, we're suggesting that that we move ahead and take some money from the trail budget to uh, fund the uh, total cost of 67719 So we'll motion is here to proceed with the construction of the accessible trail to the Colonel Amherst Monument. Money for this work will come from the grant received and the trail budget. Total cost for the project will be around $67,719.61. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Questions? In favor? Aye. 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 Gary. Thank you. The next uh, one relates to the discussion for the safety device for the fire department and crosswalk. As you know, it was uh, part and parcel of the sidewalk project that was going on, and it was sort of a separate part where the underground infrastructure was put in place, and then we had to go out and get the install of the actual uh, lights themselves. But a part of that is the traffic poles. And the traffic poles are unique to uh, the tread design, I guess, of the particular footprint. So according to uh, Tony and, and WSB, uh, he suggested that rather than tie that up into the whole process of getting someone to do the actual work itself, uh, from an, an RFP perspective, that we go out and buy the poles that fit and have them in place and then we just go out and get the engineering work and that done relates to the actual install itself. So the motion here to proceed with the ordering of the traffic poles and to give WSP the go ahead to see pricing on the supply and installation of the other equipment model the installation of the poles. So moved. Second. Yeah. Moved and seconded questions. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Carried. The retaining wall is, is due to start uh, very soon. I don't know if Brian has an update on that or not in terms of the, the exact start date. Yeah, the uh, contractor is ready to start, but uh, because we had an incident on the site and uh, occupation health and safety issue of stock work order, uh, they got to review the site safety plan. So that's all sent to them. So I'm hoping to have a uh, have a uh, favorable response back for them over the next day to get that removed, so the contractor can get on site. Solid storage should obviously still in process. The multi-year capital works project. 
the, the road is, is under full swing. I guess that would be the surprise payment getting laid down pretty soon. All the culverts that have been installed, as far as we understand, and <coughs> uh, Ben McBride's got a bit of paving schedule starting around one place on the 19th of June. So once that starts, I guess the other will follow shortly thereafter. Open space and trails, obviously, they're still in process, and we're <coughs> to the person on the uh, bypass road side of things, so we get that trail moving as well. So, why don't we get the generator? Not going to read out all the other parts, I'm just going to go down to the water quality, water pressure study. If you remember, we had money allocated under gas tax money in the budget for the study on the uh, discolored water, I guess, and we had talked about we would hold off until we found out whether or not we got the funding for the next phases of the uh, water treatment plan. And, and as we have that, uh, we're going to, to reallocate uh, that money to the uh, playgrounds. So I have a motion here to reallocate 75000 That was allowed for the water quality pressure study for the playground project. The new CIP will have to be submitted to request a change. So moved. Second. Second, any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 And okay. the motion is to submit a new capital investment plan to have the money reallocated to the purchase of playground equipment structures. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Opposed? Carried. The cleaning contract tender, there was some discussion around that and uh, the evaluation of the contract uh, is as, as originally put forward. So it's a motion here to award the building contract, building cleaning services contract 2023 to Newman's Cleaning. The average cost of week for cleaning seven sites is $1,100. This amount will vary depending on the usage of buildings at number three corner pond park. The contract will be for one year with the possibility of extension at the times we request to set the prices. So I'll move. Second. Move to second is questions. I'll make a comment there, Mayor. Uh, we had debate and discussion about this, and we've revisited a few times at the committee level. Um, when we talked about it, the idea has been to find the cheapest, best way to make sure that we've got cleaning services in place. Um, I know that the, it says here that the, the cost for cleaning may change, and the conversation around that had to do with if, it, if the sites weren't used and they didn't have to go in and clean, that the costs you know wouldn't be incurred if, if it wasn't used. Um, and then the other part of the conversation was, you know, let's put it in place for the year and let's see where things go and then, you know, look at our options and make sure that we're reviewing it so that we've got the best cost options available for services for the people of the town of Torbay. So I just wanted to share those points uh, before we vote. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Carried. Okay, from now through, everyone can read as it is, not to change certain things. The bulk every spring, just to note, and it was on the last time ago, just to notice that the uh, drop off numbers were up by somewhere around 15%, which is great. It shows that people are interested and in certainly take advantage of what we offer from the, the garage people perspective. The playground discussion uh, has been, we've seen significant increases in the last motion that alluded to that as well because we just uh, move to uh, uh, change the funding around to the structures themselves. So there's a motion here to accept the uh, plan to purchase the two play structures for this year's funds and the budget in 2024 to have them installed and fully accessible. So at this point, not, not enough money in the budget to actually so move. complete. Sorry. Did you want to move it so we can speak to it? Move it, move it, sorry. Second it. <laughs> Second it, go ahead. <laughs> No, 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 saying why is Trina saying? Trying to get to the end. Yeah, so uh, we're looking at buying structures now, and, and with the lead time that will bring us into next year anyway, before they can possibly be installed. And the plan is to budget in 2024 and then uh, install them with full, full accessibility. 
Okay. All right. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Brian, did, is there a motion ever down by drive? Mm -hmm. no, did the poll location one you're referring to? Yes. No, because remember we said that there was no money budget for it, so we're going to look at it in 2024 budget. Okay, thanks. And just, there, there, right, there is no budget here. We moved to 2024. Yeah, I think, right. it's, I think it's written there somewhere. There's a poll, <laughs> there's a poll relocation there. Poll on there, I'll buy drive. You look at it, it's one of the ones that are stuck right in the, uh, in, in the middle of the, uh, the area where the sidewalk's going to go. And, uh, so we get that move, so we budget it in 2024. So that's the motor torch portion. Okay, thank you. Questions? Hey, Mayor, if I could just add one point. Um, there's a note in here under the wastewater um, conversation, and there was a treatment company that had reached out to, uh, to committee, and we're gonna have a conversation uh, with this company. Um, the idea here, we all know that to have a wastewater treatment system down at the beach, one puts a wastewater treatment uh, system at our beautiful beach. The other thing is that the last I heard it was around a $20 million price tag to look at that. Um, this concept that came forward is the idea of having a treatment uh, consideration for wastewater that would include wetlands. It's been used in other communities across the island. And what's interesting about this is you can create different sizes of wetlands. So you could have a wetland space that would service one part of the community and then another. Maybe that could impact what we need if we did need a waste treatment down at the beach. But the other thing that was interesting about this conversation is when we talked about stormwater management, we had a $10 million bill that was gonna cost the town of Torbay to address that issue. And we were able to break that engineering out over 10 years to make it feasible so that we could address the stormwater management issues, but not have a significant impact on the, the taxpayers of Torbay as we did the work. The cool thing about this idea is that it could possibly be engineered to work the same way where you could do you know, one part of the town, maybe then another over a period of time, which may give us some consideration for waste water treatments that might be cost effective and potentially have you know, green organic spaces in the community. So uh, right now, the, the conversation at committee was, let's bring them in, let's have a conversation, learn a bit more about this, and then see where to from here. But it seems like it may be an interesting thing to consider uh, based on the topography, based on the fact that 30% is on water and sewage of the community. And uh, it may give us something that's more feasible and attainable to consider in years to come as solutions around wastewater. I know that's significant for many members of the community and maybe a great way to help protect our ocean and beautify the beach. So just, just sharing that, I thought that was cool. Yeah. Bless you, and wanted to. Uh, and to your point, there. I can share that uh, back in 2015, probably, when we originally had our best available technology study done, uh, engineer wetlands was one of the one one of the options that was available uh, that they looked at, and I also had an opportunity at my UMC meetings to tour the one in Gander and one in uh, Grand Falls, Windsor, that they have, they have the, uh, I'm trying to remember what it's called, but anyway, it's uh, engineered wetland is what it is. And what? Well, Abydos. The one thing that jumped out at me from seeing them is the large footprint of land that you need that's flat. It's, I don't even know if I can find a building lot in Torbay that's flat, so. That, that would be one of the struggles, but it, would, it certainly worked in getting a, getting a look at it. Yeah, yeah. I asked about the name I called. Abydos. <laughs> I think it's Abydos people. Uh, Brian, you would have that it's information. It's not Abydos. It's not Abydos. It's different coaches. Okay, all right. Yeah. Same, same principle, different, different, uh, different proponents. Water. Okay. Yeah. Different proponents. Okay. Yeah. This kind. 
But it's good, yes, you're right. So that's something that we need to look at going forward and uh, the more options available to us, the better. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. Alrighty then, Recreation and Community <coughs> Services. Councilor Goss. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, again, we did not meet this week, so the director did give us an update uh, for June 7th, 2023. Um, as it's been there for everybody's reading, I'm just going to highlight uh, one thing that really came along with our proclamation of, of today, uh, National Indigenous Peoples Day. The Department of Recreation, in partnership with First Light, will be sponsoring an event at the First Lights. I'm going to pronounce this Meow Me. I uh, hope I've pronounced that right. It's a powwow on June 21st. The department will also be offering an event to bring residents who are interested to this event on June 21st. Um, and also, in accordance with this, we have, uh, again, with the partnership, director's commitment from First Light on the programming events partnership as a result of the CPRA funding received. The partnership also includes council signing a declaration in support of the rights of indigenous people, uh, excuse me, peoples. Reference materials included for the future discussion and planning below. But there's also a motion uh, that goes along with this, please, for council to commit to working with First Light and First Voice Urban Indigenous Coalition to develop and sign a declaration of support for Indigenous people. So moved. Second. Voted and seconded. Comments or questions? I love this. That's a great idea. Uh, absolutely fully support it. And uh, the only other thing I'd add, and I meant to do it earlier and I forgot it when we talked about the proclamation, I think it's important to do the land acknowledgements of where we are. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, if we're going to talk reconciliation and we're going to talk about trying to, you know, create uh, spaces where we can have healing and and respect what's happened over the years, I think that, you know, part of recognizing the lands that we are on as Indigenous lands is a gesture and something that's very important for us to do. And we, we have our proclamations and we talk about this is important and why. Um, I think as a council we need to have a conversation about you know, the Indigenous land proclamations and that we respect the lands as those of the Beothic and the Métis and the lands in Labrador as, you know, the, the homelands of the Innu and the Inuit. And, uh, and I think the other thing that we should be thinking about here is language. Um, I did hear something today on the radio. They were talking about the loss of language and the attempt to erase, you know, the culture. So is there a part of this uh, would be really interesting to see that we could do activities that could bring some of that culture back in and have our youth or, and you know people in the community learn and understand more about uh, indigenous practices. I, I mean, when we go to m &L and you know we, we were taught how to do the tobacco for the offering, things like that, really cool, great ways to share and create awareness and change um, you know, as, we, as we work towards reconciliation. Yeah, Thank you. No, I agree and I know that we've, uh, I have done it. I've, at particular events that the town has, I've done the land acknowledgement. We haven't had the discussion at council level of where and when we want to do that. And it's kind of, most for the most part, it's been left to me to decide when to do it. So I do, I've done it on Canada Day and, and uh, November 11th. So and there's a few other times I think that uh, it would be appropriate. Maybe all Even the, the smudging itself, yeah. like having that at the beginning, some places yeah. that we've never had that, which would be really nice to have. Right. The director of recreation and community services is going to put forth a roadmap, so we're respectful. Right. And so that'll that'll come forth under Jen's recommendation regarding next next steps. Excellent. And and I was really hoping that you were going to say that because. You really do, and I talked about this when we were at the uh, the Mi'kmaq uh, event a couple of weeks ago. This is the, that was the first time they did it on the east coast of the province, so we were really lucky to be able to go. But it's it, we had to be careful. We want to make sure that we're honoring their practices and, and the people, but we don't want to be flipping about it. So we want to make sure that we're following best practices and we're getting advice from people who know what they're talking about. But I agree totally. Yeah, and that's the first step in signing the like, declaration of support. So once the municipality signs onto this, and I included the City of St. John's declaration from 2020 as an example of what's in it. Yep. And also the, the document that's, that's there, First Light, Our Shared Vision, that's the 42 calls of change. 
So in the appendix C there, it shows there's different levels of government and the organization they'd have to commit to, but it, wherever it says City of St. John's, you could kind of look at that as what the town of Torbay would need to do as their part. So once we sign on to that, then we'll be able to start some meaningful relationship building and programming and uh, stuff like that, some ceremony stuff and land acknowledgements and everything that comes along with it. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. So I got a the question there, and I don't know who or uh, where it's going to, but I haven't really seen, or unless I've seen it, and I don't remember it, which would be unusual, for, but for a time in Torbay, what's happening with that and where would, like, because I know there was an issue with being able to say a time in Torbay, but here we are now. That's been resolved for as long. I haven't seen it. I'm on both committees, but I haven't seen no schedule as such for what we There want. was an Excuse email. Me. We're in a Sir, motion. Can, can we, are we in a motion now? We're, we're in yeah. the middle of a motion. We haven't oh, voted yet. Yeah. So could we? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you for reminding me. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Carried. Thank you. Continue on, Deputy Mayor. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just taught that it was the end of that Ward's uh, presentation, or his update on his. Just wanted to ask. So, the manager of Heritage Culture and Information Services developed an ad looking for the call for um, volunteers for a time in Torbay. Um, there was never an issue with from the former group um, in using the name. We're, we're in the final process now regarding the settlement of the bank account, and the manager has set a training session for. Um, June 16th or 17th, I believe it is, for the for the volunteers. So I'll ask Noah for an but update. what date are we looking at? Like what month are we, because it used to always be a certain day in July that we used to have the time in Torbay, and I haven't seen no weekend or nothing in particular other than the anniversary of the town in August, but I haven't seen anything on the go for when the time in Torbay is actually going to be. So the manager is de their, the design, I guess, the drafting of the uh, list of events. Uh, Noah was working on it last week, and it's more than one week, and it's going to be uh, through the summer through the summer months. So I'll ask Noah to circulate it to everybody. Yeah, because usually uh, it was an outdoor dance or some big event that we normally had with regards to that, and people are asking, and I'm looking at them and saying, mm, don't know. Okay. All right, so he'll get back to us on that. Well, I, I just want to put it in there, Dan, because where we're going to be meeting once a month, because the next meeting is not going to be until the middle of July, so if that's in there, like, these are the kinds of things, remember, that we had talked about by having it out, so if there's going to be a committee meeting and to be able to decide on what it's going to be and bring it back to council, because the time in Torbay was always a big, yeah, big thing. I know, but why would council need to make a decision on that? Well, it would be nice to be able to know what's happening with it all, because if there's going to be committee meetings, it would be nice to have them every two weeks to continue on with that rather than just once a month. Right. And if we're calling for volunteers, I'm assuming that they're going to have some input on that. Like, I don't know, maybe it's there for the mayor's garden party and different things that we had this past year. I mean, we're into July, and it seems like some of this is not but I know, laid but down yet. What I'm saying yet. is that that stuff is going to happen. It doesn't matter. Okay, if it don't matter, if it don't need to come back. But as being yeah. on the committee, and that would be nice for us to back, know. Yes. yes. If something has to come back, let it call me. Yeah, it don't seem like there's a much of a okay priority with it. <laughs> All right, liaison committees. Uh, Atlantic Mayor's Congress. I just got back on Saturday. I was in Amherst, Nova <coughs> Scotia uh, for our meeting. I want to thank Mayor David Cogan of Amherst for hosting us. We had, a we had the largest group ever for Atlantic Mayor's Congress meeting. We had 31 municipalities represented. And uh, over the course of a couple of days, we had great, uh, great meetings. Learned a lot. There's, uh, I know I sent Don some emails while I was 
in the midst of the meetings, one about a housing fund that uh, we could look at taking advantage of. And uh, we talked about uh, transit and how a lot of these things can fit under that particular fund. It doesn't have to, you don't have to necessarily build houses. There's other things that you can do that uh, to make housing more accessible. So it's all part of one big package. It was, it was, uh, it was really good. And I did have, I had an opportunity to meet with the, meet the, uh, the Premier of Nova Scotia, Tim Houston, and uh, talk to him a little bit about the forest fires and what they were doing to try and combat that. It was, uh, and they got their hands full with that. And hopefully it's a lot of it is under control. I didn't see any, any smoke or anything like that while I was up there. So that was good news. Uh, there was something else that we were talking about too. Yes, one of the things that was on our agenda in the minutes are of our last meeting from August the 16th to the 28th that was in Shady Act New Brunswick that I did not attend uh, are there. And one of the other things that we talked about this past weekend was uh, lobbying or reaching out to our provincial uh, and federal members to uh, lobby for a basic income, livable basic income from the federal government. It's really good. It's something that uh, FCM is also talking about. So. Uh, yeah, so that's the types of things we were talking about, and there was one other thing that uh, I Mayor, found. could you what? clarify on that point when you say minimum income? Do you mean Basic. municipalities operating fiscally? No, 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 no. Uh, livable income for residents, people, for citizens okay. of the country. Okay, I just I just wanted yeah, clarification. Not, not, yeah, yeah. For, you weren't. For, it wasn't for fiscal framework. It was okay. No. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah, just curious. It was more of a broad policy type thing. And uh, yeah, so that's it. When the minutes come, uh, when I get them, I'll be sure to share them with council and you can, you can have a look. But uh, yeah, there was a lot of, we had a lot of really good discussions. And actually, I will mention the one thing. After the Shady Act meeting back in August, in December, they had a, well, I might as well call it what it was. They had a forced amalgamation in New Brunswick. <clears throat> so reduced, they reduced uh, many, they got rid of a bunch of towns and, and amalgamated them all with, uh, with, the, with their neighbors. And I know that uh, the mayor of Shediac, Roger Casey, I was talking to him about it, and his town grew like 50% overnight. And he says, it's something to, uh, to try and adapt to. So I asked him a few questions about it. How did they do it? And he said the province just mandated. And the uh, new portions of the municipality coming in, they had members of council that uh, got elected and served there. And I said, and so these were unincorporated areas that were around their area, which is something that we don't need necessarily have to deal with here, but it is something that happens in our province. And that the uh, the province actually mandated what their budget was going to be for the first year after the amalgamation so that it wouldn't be so hard on the uh, on the municipality but uh, it was certainly interesting to hear uh, what they're going through with that knowing that it's a discussion that we were having down here too with regionalization and and regional cooperation so yeah it's uh, it's eye-opening sometimes to see what they're doing in different uh, in different jurisdictions and our next meeting is in Please September stay. in Happy Valley Goose Bay. September 20th, I think. 20th to the 23rd or something like 21st to the 23rd. Mayor, did they make a, I know Nadine, the CAO for Happy Valley Goose Bay, was making a presentation to the did mayors they? about parallel CAO meetings did they they did make? they talked about that yep. so uh, I guess once when they send out their invitation for the meeting that they they'll include the details on that <coughs> all righty intergovernmental affairs I don't have any update Jack Byrne Regional 
Anybody got an update on that? No. The next update on that is the there's a strategic planning session scheduled for the 19th of June. And that's about it for now. Okay. Thank you, sir. North East Avalon Joint Council, Deputy Mayor. We got our meeting and social next um, Wednesday night. Great. My last one for the summer. Next Wednesday. Looking forward to it. See you there. See you there. Uh, Royal of Lake Assembly. I don't have any update. Uh, Torbay Volunteer Fire Department. Councilor Manning. Uh, the minutes are there. Uh, fire Department is doing as they do. All their training and keeping up with everything. Making plans for the regatta. I love their booth at the regatta. Okay. And their 50th year coming up next year. So it's all there. Excellent. Thank you. Urban Municipalities Committee. I think I uh, can't remember if I circulated the minutes from our last meeting or not. Anyway, I'll, I'll do that once I figure out if I got them. But our next meeting is in Bonavista, August 17th to the 19th or 20th. So that's my anniversary. I was really looking forward to that. But I was able to score two tickets to come from away for August 20th today, and I will be going there. So that'll be a nice anniversary gift to her. Excellent. That was, that was not that a surprise. Was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just watching. <laughs> All right. Notice of motion. We have none. New business, Council Tamper. too much so I turned it off. Now I just want to send out uh, a thanks and a congratulations to uh, I think she was a key staff person Kim Osmond from Corporate Services. She's been here quite a few years, uh, played a, a prominent role out in the front area uh, dealing with residents and staffs and uh, difficult issues especially concerning taxes and whatever, finances. Uh, but she also played uh, different roles, you know, she filled in for Anne, taking minutes for council minutes. She was the returning officer for elections. So, but she had that personality, I think, that, that everybody enjoyed when, when we, we met. And unfortunately, since we made the renovations, we don't see the staff in there very much as we used to. But Kim is uh, moving on, and uh, she's got a, a job um, on her hometown, Fogo Island and looking forward to it. And more recently, she volunteered to uh, do some work with the Manion Collection too at the his for the History House, ser serving on the steering committee. So I just want to wish her the best luck. She was a good friend, and I think the town is going to miss her. OK. Thank you, sir. Councillor Manny. OK, and Councillor Tapper, I agree 100 200% with what you just said concerning Kim. I uh, wish her well and will be greatly, greatly missed for sure. I also wanted to send out a uh, thank you to our Economic Development Office and Tourism Officer, Deanne and uh, Deanne Lawrence and uh, Manager and Staff at the History House for putting together yesterday. Well, I really enjoyed the event, uh, that's, you know, the Tulip Festival opening. Uh, job well done, so thank you for that. And I, and I just wanted to say to the kids and parents that were here, well, to the kids, congratulations to each and every one. And it was so awesome to see each and every one of them there. Like, it was, it was really good. So to all them, congratulations, and a very big thank you to them for taking part. And that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Appy. Thank you. A um, few thanks. I wanted to put a thank you at DFCM for the uh, invitation to participate in the meeting with the Prime Minister. Um, that wasn't something that was available to all members of FCM, and uh, it was an honor, a great honor, to represent the town of Torbay at that table and to meet the Prime Minister and talk to him directly about issues that we're experiencing in our community and, and ask him what the federal government is doing, you know, to, to address those issues. 
Um, it was a great honor also to be invited to speak to the Newfoundland Labrador Youth Parliament. Uh, I did so with uh, Mayor Dan Danny Breen and a couple of colleagues. Um, one of the councillors in Fairyland, Nathan, joined us, and uh, there was another uh, councillor as well from uh, Central Newfoundland who uh, who joined <coughs> us. And it was amazing to speak to youth who are interested in politics in our uh, in our province from all around the island and uh, up Labrador. And it was really nice to explain to them how cool it is to be a municipal elected official and, and why that matters. Um, I also wanted to do a thank you to the organizers for the No Hate Rally. And I know there's been an awful lot of conversation happening, unfortunately, uh, in the media and uh, on social media around um, people being concerned about the, uh, the, the Pride Month <coughs> celebrations that we have a proclamation and we are, flying, we are flying the flag outside. And I just want to thank Council for the support that we provide every year to that community. There are individuals who still have a lot of things that they need to learn and understand, same as we talked about the Indigenous culture and, and, and what needs to happen in that space, this space as well. And you know, it was really interesting, one of the comments I heard on the news was, we thought we had this dealt with you know, 20 years ago when we were out walking in the streets. Women issues that I've championed for the last three years at the federal stage, all kinds of issues are not things that we can say we've got this done and taken care of. That's why it's so important for the town of Torbay and partners to continue to make proclamations to action welcoming and inclusive communities. And for me, I gotta tell you, it warmed my heart to see that happen. And I believe it was Ophelia Ravencroft, Ophelia Ravencroft one of our colleagues in St. John's, who said at the mic, there's, we're, we're, we're outnumbered 100 to one for the people who are going to come and have a protest against having you know th this curriculum in the school. There was 100 to one that showed up at the Confederation building that day. So just did my heart wonders and really grateful that people came together. I couldn't participate, I was working, but it, it was really amazing to see and I just wanted to acknowledge that tonight. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, I just wanted to, um, I guess I echo some of the comments that Councillor Manning and Councillor Tapper made with regards to uh, Kim Osborne leaving. Uh, I think that it's uh, very unfortunate for the town of Torbay to see her leave, but really good for uh, our community of Fogo. And even while I drop by, I drop by here on Friday, and even while I was here. Uh, we had a resident come in and how she dealt with that so it's her professionalism and her wonderful personality that she had in dealing with people as they came in so I uh, I wish her uh, wish her all the best and yesterday it was really good as well up at the History House Museum uh, Deanne had uh, the kickoff for the Tula Festival and it all went uh, really well. So a big thank you to all of the staff involved with making that happen. And I know during the week, there's many other activities in that taking place. And I know tomorrow with the seniors, I know that we have somebody, a visitor, a past mayor going to join us tomorrow. And I'm working on getting the rest of the family there as well. So hopefully that'll all go off as planned. It's really nice to see, so thanks. You're gonna be there? Oh yes. You can okay. uh, tell them I was asked about them. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, I got, a couple, I got a couple things. I'm gonna try and go through them pretty quickly. Uh, I wanna thank everybody who came to the Tulip Festival opening yesterday. I know that Deanne and I were trying to count to see how many people we had. I know we were up to 52, and then I saw more people coming in and leaving. So I think it was over 60 people, which I thought was really good considering the weather was so crappy. And uh, but it just goes to show that, uh, I've always said this, if you put good things in place for people who, for things they wanna do, they will come. And mm -hmm. that was proof yesterday of that. So thank you to uh, Deanne and to Noah and to everybody else who had a hand in that. It was an excellent event. And thank you to uh, Mayor Yetman and Mayor Butt who came down from Car uh, Bay Robertson Carpenter respectfully to come down and, and hang out with us, so it was nice. Uh, I want to thank the residents who contacted me last week with regards to the hateful graffiti that was in Forest Landing on our trails and on our signs 
And uh, and I want to thank Chrissy Holmes from CBC for reaching out to me to actually get me on to talk about that because that is something that when it happens, we have to speak out about it. If you know who did it, call us and report it because there is no place in this town for that. And the slogan that's been going around and I've talked about it, there's no, it's, this is no place for hate. It isn't. So if, if I don't know what somebody's motivation to do that is, but take a look at what it is that you're doing and who it is that you're hurting and please stop doing it. We don't want it in our town. That's all I got to say about that. Uh, and then I'm going to, I was waiting to do this. I was going to do it last week, but I decided I was going to wait till this week. So I want to extend my best and my thanks to Kim, who is leaving. Her and I have been friends for a number of years outside of, of her work here at the town. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to miss her. I'm going to miss her here. She was, a, uh, she was a real asset to the town, as all of our staff are. But uh, she was here for 12 years and uh, took on multiple uh, of roles. She's very lucky. She's going to go work for the Shorefast Foundation in Vogel Island as Zeta Cobb. I guess if you ever want to go and learn from somebody, particularly a successful woman, that there is no better place to do it than there. So. I wish her all the best, and I'm sure I'll see her around. And uh, and that's it. Our loss is their gain, mm -hmm. and uh, I wish her all the best. All right. Question answer. Did any questions or answers came in, Don? No. Nobody sent in an answer. Oh. Surprised. I better watch how I what faces I make. So I might get eight tipped. Uh, the next public council meeting is scheduled to take place on Monday, July 17th at 6.30 p.m. here in the, at the Torbay Town Hall. And with that, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Moved, seconded, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thanks, everybody.